Hello and welcome to our channel. Today, we will share how the iconic fashion brand Hermes of Paris was started. More specifically, how a young boy named Thierry Hermes went from tragically losing his entire family to unlikely building a billion dollar luxury brand, as well as how its most iconic bag, the Birkin, came to be thanks to sheer luck. This high-end designer has been in business for more than 200 years, and many would say it is one of the most prestigious luxury brands in the world because of its reputation for producing upscale goods. Hermes of Paris has used numerous successful techniques over the years that have contributed to its iconic standing in the fashion industry. We will get into more of that soon. In this story, you will learn about Hermes' brand philosophy, how Hermes was created, and how Hermes has established itself as a leader in the cutthroat world of luxury through a combination of legacy, a natural eye for detail, and top-notch craftsmanship, and how all of that was accomplished from the most unlikely of beginnings. Early Life In Krefeld a little town outside Dusseldorf, Thierry Hames, was born on January 10, 1801, to a German mother and a French immigrant father. Thierry was the youngest of their six children. Two years after Thierry was born, the Napoleonic Wars broke out, claiming the lives of several members of his family. And if that wasn't awful enough, numerous additional family members also passed away due to various diseases. Following these devastating deaths, the remaining Hermes family relocated from Krefeld to Paris in 1928, settling in the Pont Admore neighborhood in the city's north. Three years after the family's relocation, Thierry, then 27 years old, began learning the craft of leatherworking. After some time, Thierry and his wife Petro Neoperient welcomed their first son into the world and named him Charles Emil Ems, who would eventually succeed his father as the Hermes heir. Start of Business at the age of 36, Thierry opened his first workshop in 1883. The shop was in Paris, and the majority of his private customers were French nobility and carriage companies. He strived to produce the best horse harnesses and bridles for them, and was aware of and considerate of his customers' expectations from the beginning. He provided the simplicity and lightness they wanted in a city awash with avant-garde fashions. His harnesses were well received, making them a highly successful venture as they represented both endurance and precision cuts, and his technical accomplishment was finally acknowledged. Years later, he received a prize in the 1867 Universal Expedition. But after working there for several lengthy decades, he passed suddenly in 1878 at the age of 77. After his father's passing, his son Charles Emil took over the family business, and he created a shop in addition to moving the workshops to 24 Falberg St. Anna. After that, Hermes quickly gained a stellar name all over the world, as he started serving the affluent of Europe, Russia, North Africa, Asia, and the Americas. During his time there, Charles Emil expanded the brand and later created a renowned Cory bag. The bag was a tremendous success since it allowed riders to carry their saddles with them. Legacy passed on. But after over 30 years, Charles Emil decided it was time to hand the reins over to his son Adolf and Emil Maurice. They gave the business a new name, Hermes Ferrier, and worked together to increase its notoriety on a global scale. After some time, a fascinating new tool called the Zipper was presented to Emile Maurice when he was in Canada. He brought this clever small device back to France and submitted a design patent for realizing its immense potential. He was the first person in France to accomplish so. So the first garments and purses with zippers were created by Hermes Ferrer in the 1910s. The zipper soon gained notoriety as the Hermes Zipper when the news swiftly traveled throughout France. Hermes was providing the Tsar of Russia with saddles after the zipper's success, and the workshop employed up to 80 saddle artisans. Through this time, Emil Maurice also enlisted the assistance of his son-in-law, Robert Dumas, for the developments made by Hermes' company. Soon after that, a new product was added to the company's success when Emil Maurice's wife complained about not being able to locate a bag she liked. And this is in the time that first leather purses were introduced in 1922. Later on, the first men's ready-to-wear item was a golf jacket made in 1925 to match the customer's style. In 1927, Hermes debuted jewelry, followed by watches and saddles. A decade later, in 1928, they created the Silk Scarf, which was an instant hit with famous people like Jacqueline Kennedy. The silk ties and perfumes followed later. Death of Emile Maurice However, Emile Maurice passed away soon after that, and in 1951, Maurice's son-in-law, Robert Dumas, became the company's new leader. Robert had a lot to prove because he was the first non-descendant to take over the business, but it didn't take long for him to make it evident that he was the ideal choice for the position. The Further Success of Hermes 
He designed the horse and carriage emblem for Ubiquitous and was also in charge of several of the company's biggest hats, such as the Chandler bracelet. The history of the well-known Kelly bag, which Robert Dumas created in the 1930s, took an unexpected turn. Grace Kelly was seen carrying a Hermes bag in the new iconic image of the Hollywood actress turned Monaco princess from 1956, which she detaches to cover her growing pregnancy. After appearing on the front cover of Life magazine, the picture quickly gained international notoriety. Women began to flood Hermes stores at once, clamoring for the Kelly bag, and Hermes soon changed its name to reflect this. It was the beginning of a success story. Hermes was suddenly thrust into the public eye and out of the exclusive groups of the world elites at this time. As the pinnacle of luxury, the bag was an instant hit, but three decades later, something even more unique would be developed, and we'll get to that in a moment. The Decline of Hermes Business Later, business took a turn for the worse, even though the majority of luxury fashion had begun to use increasingly synthetic and technologically developed fabrics, such as nylon, polyester, and vinyl. Hermes insisted on using only the best natural material, which were considerably more expensive, and put them at a competitive disadvantage. The Hermes house's future suddenly appeared gloomy, and the business changed owners once more in 1978. So the Hermes family took control of the situation again this time, as of 1978, Jean-Louis Dumas assumed the role of leader. Jean-Louis gradually transformed the Hermes brand, diversifying it and reviving it for the modern age. He changed the company's name because it was no longer a brother-owned company and narrowed the focus to three crucial goods. On one very fortunate day, Jean-Louis and English actress and singer Jane Furkett boarded the same Air France trip from Paris to London in 1984, and the possibility to replicate that success finally materialized. Jane was renowned for consistently carrying a wicker basket. She utilized it for everything. But as she attempted to stow her large basket in the overhead bin, the lid fell off, causing all of her belongings to spill out onto the ground. When she lamented that she couldn't find a good bag anywhere, Jean-Louis made himself known. The two spent the flight drawing various handbag designs on a napkin. This is how the production of Birkin bags was started. However, the bag wasn't well liked when it initially came out, but as a result of its high price and protracted waiting lines, it gradually came to represent riches and exclusivity. Following the Birkin bag's incredible success, Jean-Louis expanded Hermes' global operations while also consolidating its existing outlets and enhancing its ability to exert greater control over its merchandise. Hermes Stores in 2005 Soon after that, Jean-Louis decided it was time to quit and relax and pass down the legacy of his great luxury brand. In addition to announcing his retirement, Jean-Louis named his son, Pierre-Alexis Dumas, as creative director and his buddy Patrick Thomas as CEO. Before the appointment of Jean-Louis Dumas's nephew, Axel Dumas, in 2013, Patrick Thomas made sure the transition between the two generations went smoothly. Later on, the company experienced its highest growth under Pierre Alexis and Axel's leadership and enjoyed iconic status in the world of luxury. From ready-to-wear leather goods and saddle gear to lifestyle accessories, furnishings, fragrances, watches, and jewelry, Kerning Hermes still offers a wide variety of goods. We assume that's what occurred when six generations of creative visionaries contribute their ideas to the business. This is the true story of a boy who started Hermes, an elegant fashion brand, and turned it into a successful legacy passed down to generations and booming even today. For more interesting motivational stories about today's biggest companies, don't forget to subscribe to our channel.